Hello, welcome back to my tech fund. I'm Igor and uh, Polymaker again give me very big homework because they send me their all uh, nylon and TPU filaments and I already uh, tested their Polymax and Polylite lines and uh, when I publish this video maybe even TPU filaments will be already tested but in this video I'm testing their uh, nylon PA filaments. Uh, what you, you know about the nylon that it is very moisture sensitive so uh, prepare that you have to use some kind of filament dryer or if you have the enclosure uh, in that case uh, the hotter temperature will result a little bit drier environment inside but uh, these filaments are uh, manufactured with some kind of war free technology and it is specifically recommended to print it without enclosure now let's see what are these copy uh, PA6CF, uh, PA6GF and PA12CF. CF and GF means uh, carbon fiber and glass fiber filaments. Uh, this means you should use a hardened nozzle. Even with this uh, COPA uh, filament, it is recommended according to the website to use some kind of uh, wear resistant uh, nozzle, even if, if it is not so aggressive like uh, carbon fiber or glass fiber versions. Also important to know about these filaments that they require a higher printing temperature. From this basically the lowest is the COPA which requires print temperature between 250 and 270 degrees Celsius. And uh, the PA6 CF and GF requires 280 and 300 degrees Celsius. And the PA12 CF between 260 and 300 degrees Celsius. And with all filaments it is recommended to completely turn off the part cooling fan. At this moment I'm still not sure uh, on which printer I printed. My original imagination was to print it on my ND3 S1 Pro, which is able to print uh, higher temperatures even to 300 degrees. Uh, but I'm preparing some upgrade there. I want to install some heat sink, especially on Y-axis uh, stepper motor, because inside the enclosure it becomes quite hot, uh, 80 degrees Celsius almost. Uh, but I want to prepare it to be my workhorse. Uh, so probably I will print this on my Prusa Mark S also, which is able to print these uh, higher temperatures. Maybe you are even familiar with my testing method. So I have those uh, regular test specimens, which I always uh, use in my experiments. And this means the results are comparable, not only with the, uh, between these filaments, but also with those which I did earlier. And basically the results are downloadable from my uh, website in Excel table. But my Patreon supporters have access to the Excel table, where I summary all results from all uh, testing from previous videos. I'm starting with copy a filament and the temperature tower will be from 270 to 250 degrees Celsius. For the bed I'm not sure at this moment but I will start with plus a satin sheet using some glue stick on it and the fan will be turned off. Everything will be printed on plus a S without enclosure uh, and I will not dry it. I will use it out of the box uh, but during the printing I will use everyone filament dryer to keep it dry because this can easily absorb moisture even during the printing. The filament change is successful so far. The first layer looks good and I hope it will stay like that. And this is the bridging moment. I always like to record it with these filaments without cooling. But now there is very very minimal cooling on the fan. The printing is finished a few seconds ago. Hmm, and I can see that it sticks quite good. Only 50 degrees Celsius ahead on the bed, but I also use the glue stick. I will wait until it cools down and then try to remove it. Oops, that was easy. This is great printing on any temperature. Don't be confused, this is 270 only, I don't have that element. The bridging already followed during the printing, it was great on any temperature, absolutely no stringing. And even the overhang is great, especially if we, we keep in mind that uh, I don't have any uh, part cooling here. Only on 60 degrees I can see a little bit more deformation, but beside that, great printing. Only on the top surface I can see that it is a little bit deformed. Probably it was too hot until it placed the next layer. This is the problem because I don't have any part cooling here. But otherwise, this is great temperature tower. It looks like I have the adhesion which I can trust, so I decided to print all test objects at once. Only I have some critical parts with some bridging or maybe two big overhangs. But we will see that this is approximately three and a half hours printing. 
The printing is at 50% and each test object is perfectly striped without any problems. And last, to vertical objects for the layer adhesion test. Printing is finished and immediately want to check the bed adhesion. Ah, which is great. And I will analyze a little bit better these vertical test objects. I think it needs a little bit more cooling, more than zero, or I have to slow down the printing. And as I thought so, it's a little bit all melted here on this part because they don't have any part cooling and printing time for these layers is very short because every other object is printed until this. Mm, or I have to slow down on this part or maybe enable the part cooling to, I don't know, 10 or 15%, but that will have a negative effect on the layer adhesion. I decided to reprint those vertical test objects and they look much better now. In the middle third part uh, I reduced the speed to 60% and add the 10% part cooling fan. And probably this will have a negative effect on the layer adhesion, but I will compare them with the uh, originally printed without any part cooling. And also uh, all other three materials in this video I print with this method separately. So these are new test objects and they look much better here in this middle part. End of the filament is locked and goes back to the resealable bag. Next is PS6 glass fiber. The printing temperature is between 280 and 300 degrees Celsius, but the temperature tower will be from 290 down to 280 degrees. I'm not going up to 300 because it is very close to alarm temperature on this printer, which is 305 degrees Celsius. And once I have a problem with that, and uh, the wet temperature will be the same and the fan will be off. The spool is the same, so I will not analyze that, and it looks like it is in grey color. I thought everything is in black. Hmm, and like a sandpaper, I can feel maybe those small fibers. So definitely pay attention that you need a harder nozzle for these materials. The first layer will be fine. And if there will be no warping, then it will be printed correctly. The bridging looks great, but it enables the fan to 10%. Printing is finished and I know the bed adhesion is great because I already removed this purge line. And what I have here is a perfect temperature tower. I already followed the bridging during the printing, it was great and absolutely no stringing. And look at this overhangs, perfect overhang even without any cooling. Great top layer and uh, bottom layer, also great curved surfaces. And I know that I have a great uh, bed adhesion, so I will not have a problem with this filament. Of course, I have to pay attention that it is abrasive, so I need harder nozzle. And I print all test objects at once, only for those uh, layer adhesion test specimens. I will add 10% uh, cooling and slow down on that critical part I explained with the previous material. And uh, I believe that this glue stick is here recommended by Prusa material table just to protect this surface because the bed adhesion may be too good. This is now fifth layer and it looks perfectly so far. Printing at 40%. Only this middle 10 millimeters are printed with the 10% cooling and 60% speed, but I believe this material could be printed even without any part cooling but I want this to be comparable with the previously printed copy A. I hope this will not have some big negative effect to the layer adhesion. Printing is finished, just quick uh, bed adhesion check, but I know it is great. Perfect shape. I lock the end of the filament and I notice it is very brittle. The filament is brittle, we receive the material is that's a separate story, but uh, this bending may easily break by time. So I think this is safer matter because there is no stress inside the filament. Copy A6 but now with carbon fibers. And here you can see how they lock the filament, so I will do the same after the printing. Not the best solution from everyone, I mean this is quite big tension because of this breaking in the path. 
the first layer lay down perfectly, so no problems with that, but I notice a little bit more friction. I can hear a click sound from time to time, that's the friction between filament lines. And uh, definitely a solution for the filament exit on this Arimon filament dryer is not really great, I have to redesign it because it must be much smoother. So far the printing is very similar to the glass fiber version. And another perfect temperature tower, starting with overhang analyzing, great bridging, no stringing and perfect top and bottom surfaces. No problems with this element neither, this is now the third layer and I'm using the same G-code. Now it's finishing that critical part and it looks perfect, I will show you when it's printed. And look at this beauty. And before I switch the filament I need one more printing and that's the timing belt because a lot of you suggested to try the timing belts from nylon and not from TPU. Well, we will see soon. On the build plate it looks great but let's see how flexible is it. No, this is not flexible enough. Hmm, it's a pity. And I printed the belt from CoPA on Sovol SV06 which is able to print on those higher temperatures. From these four materials, uh, these don't have glass or carbon fiber, but officially it is also recommended on the Polymaker's website to use the hardened nozzle, but this is only 12 minutes printing, so I hope this uh, nozzle will not have any problems. Let's check the bed adhesion of this texture PI sheet. Mm, perfect. As you can see the timing belt looks great but I think it's not flexible enough because when I start with the bending I feel that it breaks and it stays like that. It's a pity because otherwise it would look great. I want to show you why should you, you really use the hard nozzle if it is recommended. I'm not sure if it is visible on camera. This is the rubber exit from the filament dryer and uh, on this side the, it was uh, in direct contact with the filament and it starts with the wearing. End of the filament locked. And last material in this video is a PA12 carbon fiber, which is less sensitive to moisture, but there is still print from the filament dryer. And quickly I want to check how brittle is this material. Mm, yes, the filament itself is brittle like the previous uh, GF and CF materials. Filament loaded without any problems. That's the first layer and it looks great and the temperature tower will be from 290 to 260 degrees Celsius. The bridging is perfect with this filament too. It's printed and the bed adhesion is great like with the previous filaments too. And this is another perfect temperature tower, great overhang with zero cooling, fantastic bridges. No stringing and all surfaces are great. This is the fourth layer already so it looks great so far. And the last two elements for the layer adhesion test. This is PVA based glue and this means it is cleanable with the water. Everything is printed and uh, now we have to talk about two important things. One, I know about annealing, but uh, 6 hours on 80 degrees Celsius, I know that's something what most of the users will not do and I'm curious about their strength as they are now without that annealing. Uh, later in separate video I will choose one, probably CoPA, and uh, I will compare the uh, annealed and non-annealed uh, test objects, because from this I got more than half kilograms pool. The second thing I want to talk about is the moisture. I already mentioned that the nylon will absorb uh, moisture from the air, but that's true not only for filament, but also for printed objects, and by time they will get a little bit weaker. Now, polymakers have a great animation uh, where they explain this, and uh, approximately after maybe one week or ten days, uh, the objects are very close to that uh, stable state. 
Of course, less sensitive to this is the P812. But uh, this means that I will leave them as they are now on open air 10 days and I will start my mechanical testings only after 10 days and I hope that uh, state is closer to that which we will get I don't know, in half years or similar. Temperature in this room is between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius and approximately 50% relative humidity and now after 10 days uh, I am starting with the mechanical testing. I'm starting with tensile polling tests and these test objects are printed in horizontal position with 4x4 4 4 mm the smallest cross section area. Unfortunately, I already know when I see this kind of breaks, uh, this is a typical sign of the weaker layer adhesion, but uh, we will find out in a few minutes. And now the layer adhesion test, uh, these objects are printed in vertical position, and I'm starting with CoPA, and these two are printed with 0% cooling with uglier cross-section area here. And now CoPA with 10% uh, cooling. Less fiber version. PA6 carbon fiber version. PA12 carbon fiber. And I'm so happy that I was wrong with the layer adhesion. I can see the numbers only when I analyze the footage, but even now I know from the feeling that all were very strong and all broke on proper uh, smallest cross-section area except this overmelted part, which I didn't like anyway, so I wouldn't print it like this. And basically everything is okay with the layer adhesion. And here there are those four cross-section areas <laughs> plus the overmelted version. Now the shear stress, this test object is uh, five millimeter in diameter and the sharing will be on two sides. Sometimes I couldn't find all three pieces, but they are all shared correctly on those two cross-section areas. And here you can see how they look like after the sharing. And for the feeling, they are very strong in this type of the test. The torque or twist test, this object is 6 mm in diameter. And I want to record the torque at a 90 degree rotation and the maximal torque. And only now I feel that it's weaker. <laughs> Glass fiber. 0 0.9. Oops, 1.9. PA6 carbon fiber. 0 0.6. 1.5 and I feel it's break. P12 carbon fiber 0 0.9 1.9 was the peak It's interesting to see different type of the braking with copy I could make maybe two or three twists until it uh, deformed but it didn't broke completely uh, glass fiber and uh, P12 carbon fiber broke similar here at the, their head and the PA6 carbon fiber broke along the layers. And now let's see how brittle or tough are these materials with this uh, half kilogram hammer and this ISOD impact tester. Copy it. Zero position. PA6 glass fiber. PA6 carbon fiber. 
Okay, 12 carbon fiber. Let's take a closer look. So definitely it looks like the fibers do a great job in this impact test. So these three are much stronger compared to the copier. This is a zero position and this is after breaking the copier test object and this is after breaking PS6 glass fiber. And this is very strong PS6 carbon fiber and this is PA12 carbon fiber. And if I measure everything from the zero position, I will get these distances. This is age, but it has to be converted in meters in this calculation to get the breaking energy. And of course, bigger values are better. And I think I have applications for one of these three filaments because I need a different bracket for this ISO tester. A regular uh, version cannot be used because two bolts has to be screwed in this direction and two bolts in this direction. Temperature testing. I believe that this experiment is important for these materials. I have here are those test specimens with the M10 as a small load and now we follow the temperature with this cooking thermometer. Uh, this is just a backup solution. I will jump a few minutes in this time lapse. There is the reference line and here you can see the materials and uh, I want to record the temperature of the first deformation and you will see the first one will be P12 on approximately 150 degrees Celsius and then co PA or 165 and I couldn't notice any deformation on two PA6 filaments. So we need to reach the alarm temperature. Oh, very soft. And look at this. They cool down now. So have a look at this. This is co PA. This is PA12 and these two are PA6 uh, glass and carbon fiber and they are almost completely striped. Let's see if uh, you can notice any deformation on them. This is the glass fiber and this is carbon fiber. And if I have to decide between two, I think the glass fiber is a little bit more deformated. Now let's try to remove this nut. Okay. Now I'm preparing my regular bending grip test. The specimens will be in exactly this order. I have these uh, C test specimens and I will place this uh, 1.25 kg load on them and I will measure the deformation between these two reference surfaces. During the measuring I am locking the position with this uh, printed object. 25.94 This is the first day after 24 hours and I think the co-PA will fail very soon so probably it will not be finished. And uh, from these three, uh, interesting, the PA12 is the worst and these are quite similar. I think uh, PA6 carbon fiber version is a little bit better. I just heard a crash. After one and a half days, the weight fell down from the copy a test object. Picture once a day. So this is after day one. This is the second day. Day three. Day four. Day five. Day six without PA12. And then I place everything in oven on 51 degrees Celsius for one hour. So this was the sixth day and this is after the heating. And now removing of the load. And this is the permanent deformation on these two objects. And now I'm preparing my torque creep test. I will tie these bolts with this uh, torque wrench. And tomorrow I want to measure is there any additional deformation using the same torque. And I prepared all test objects using the same torque and I marked them just in case. And between tests they will be stored inside on room temperature next to these C test specimens. And let's see if we have additional deformation after one day using the same torque. This is after one day, 24 hours. All test objects has quite noticeable creeping. The second day, C 
similar situation. Only on third day I noticed a little bit less deformation on copy A6 filaments. But P812 always have the significant deformation every day. This is day 6. And this is day 6 after heating 51 degrees Celsius for 1 hour. And this is the permanent deformation from one side. And I can see the deepest is on copier and P812. And this is from the other side. Now I left the bending test for the end because we have to discuss very important thing. There will be some significant change in my testing method. Usually I uh, use two cameras and I pull it with some crane scale and uh, follow the deformation and I try to record the load at two millimeter deformation and breaking load. But a lot of you wrote me in the comments that uh, it will be more interesting to see some uh, specific load and to see the deformation for it. So. So I already mentioned, distance between supports is 50 millimeters. Of course, it has some uh, fillet here, maybe radius of one millimeter. And then I will place uh, different loads. I will start with 1.25 kilograms, then 2.5. This will be five kilograms, and at the end, 10 kilograms, and I will measure the deformation. If there will be some uh, creeping or something like that, then I will always wait 10 seconds, and only then I will record the deformation in millimeters. Copier. Before I start, I want to show you something. So here I moved from 5 to 10 kilograms, and as you can see, it continuously deforms. This is speed up video a little bit, but uh, then I decided that I want to record the start deformation, then the deformation after 30 seconds, and after 60 seconds. But in this video, I will show you only the deformations after 30 seconds. All other deformations I will show you in the results part. So this is now copy A with the deformations after 30 seconds on given load. Glass fiber, PS6. PS6 carbon fiber. PA12 carbon fiber. And here they are after this test, almost no permanent deformation. Very minimal visible. Let's summary all results in this Excel table, which is downloadable from mytechfun.com website, but of course data will add to that summary table, which is available for my Patreon supporters. Let's start with the creep test. So this is the rough data distance between two reference surfaces. And uh, copy A failed after one and a half days and uh, PA12 after fifth day. But what we need is difference between two days. That's why I prepared this data and this is visible on this graph. At this point is copy A, this is PA12 and only PA6 filaments perform good in this test. Uh, slightly better PA6, the carbon fiber version. And now the torque creep test, uh, these are two values, but uh, what we need is the average and this we can see on the graph. And uh, interesting, here the PA12 was the worst and uh, only basically PA6 performed good after fourth day. So if you want to use it in combinations with some screws, so definitely then PA6 carbon fiber version is the best between these four. Tensile test and the layer adhesion test I like to present always next to each other on the same scale. And uh, on the layer adhesion, don't forget I have here copy A without any part cooling and with 10% cooling. And it is good to see that there is no big difference. And uh, another interesting information that uh, there is no big difference in between the horizontal and vertical printed object. And this is great because this is very close to my dream filament. Uh, where I don't have to care about uh, the position of the printing and we don't have that weakness along the z-axis. This double-sided shear stress, well definitely all four are great in this test, but the best is PA6, the carbon fiber version. 
And now that bending test. So in this table, I basically presented only the deformation of, uh, on this load after 30 seconds. And that's what can we see on this graph. But this is much more interesting. And I think that this new testing method is so great that uh, it is worth sacrificing my previous testing method. Uh, for example, this is a deformation under 2.5 kilogram load after one second, 30 seconds and after one minute. And this is presented on this graph. And this means if we can see some kind of horizontal or near horizontal line, that's good. If it is under the angle, uh, this means uh, we have a creeping during this one minute and uh, this load is too big for this filament. This is that uh, classic torque test. Basically, I think the, the load at 90 degree angle, these blue values are more uh, useful. And the isod impact test, which is very important for the nylon filaments, and all four perform great in this test, especially PA6 carbon fiber version. And another test where these filaments perform great, and there's the temperature test. And uh, basically, these two didn't deform on 200 degrees Celsius. Of course, don't forget that this is very short, 15 minute test, so I wouldn't use actually these filaments on, on the, this temperature. But uh, basically, this is uh, the testing method which I always use, so the results are comparable with those which I did earlier. And other conclusions. Well, uh, first of all, I apologize for a long video, but uh, this was huge work and it cannot be shorter. But maybe you didn't even notice that there are no ads during the video. Uh, about the print sheet, actually, in the meantime, I received from Prusa a print sheet specially designed for PA material but it is too late for this video it will be tested in one of my next videos and about these materials uh, first about printability which is great this warp free technology works fantastic and it, they can be printed on open printer of course pay attention that you need a harder nozzle and definitely i would recommend you to use a filament dryer any filament dryer uh, tested on this channel can be used for these purposes to keep it dry during the printing and immediately after printing put it in some resealable or vacuum bag with some desiccant inside. Of course, uh, between filament dryers, I would recommend those with the fan and the possibility to place a uh, desiccant inside. About mechanical properties, well, they are not really equal, and uh, that's why it is important uh, to know your application and choose the correct filament for that. For example, uh, I need a stiffening bracket for my isod impact tester. And for this four, I choose the PS6 carbon fiber version because it was the best on that impact test and also it performed great on that uh, screw creep test. Of course, uh, I will check the screws after a week and I will use some bigger washers to spread the load on the material. For example, PA12 is uh, less sensitive to moisture. Co-PA, it can be printed at lower temperature and it has very similar strength along the Z or maybe in XY direction. Of course, keep in mind that uh, nylon creeps and especially PA12, for example, so it is not good for application where you place a constant bigger load on them. For example, that's why Stefan from CNC Kitchen failed when it, he built his Warren Zero using CD printed parts for carbon fiber nylon instead of ABS because of this creeping. Of course, uh, now I am smarter after this test and definitely something you should keep in mind. So they are great on impact test, on, on uh, their temperature resistant materials, uh, but they creep. Carbon fibers are great uh, in, in the bending test. And I'm curious about your opinion about my new bending test method. I think uh, it will give us a great information, so maybe from uh, Maybe I will repeat uh, this uh, bend, new bending test with some more important filaments like, I don't know, maybe Polymex PC, some ABS or something like that. Uh, if you have some additional experience, you know, write me a few lines in the comment section. And thank you for watching and happy printing.